Hello, I'm KG. And I'm Christy. And we're interpreters here at the Missouri Botanical Garden. And today we are digging in to monarchs. Have you ever seen a butterfly that looks like this? This is a monarch butterfly. Maybe you've seen one as they migrate through St. Louis. Monarch caterpillars eat and poop a lot. And as adults, monarch butterflies pollinate flowers. And the last generation born each year travels all the way to Mexico. Like other pollinators, they are in trouble. But we all have the power to help. Come with us on this journey and we'll show you how. Our first stop is to talk to somebody who knows more about butterflies than we do. Science Education Coordinator and Entomologist Chris Hartley at the Butterfly House. So Chris, can you tell me what's so important about monarchs? Sure. So monarch butterflies are very well known and very beloved butterflies. They are very recognizable to people. In fact, there are people who are grown now who remember seeing monarchs when they were kids. And honestly, there are very few insects that have that much recognition and that much fondness or um, closeness to people as the monarch butterfly does. And because of that familiarity that people have with the monarch butterfly, it actually makes a wonderful ambassador animal. Ooh, can you tell me what an ambassador animal is? An ambassador animal is an animal that is recognized to have potential for conservation movements. Usually animals get to be ambassador animals because they are familiar to people, they are cared for by people, and also because they occupy broad stretches of land. That is to say they have a very wide range and they're found in lots of different habitats. But good ambassador animals occur in many different places so that people that are thousands of miles apart in familiarity with that animal who love it and want to protect it. Can you tell me why it is that people say monarchs are threatened? Sure. So if you look at the monarch butterfly's population, the total number of monarchs that exist in North America, if you look at that over the past 50 years or so, what you'll see is that the number has declined. And in the last few years, in the last few decades, it's declined sharply. They're threatened by habitat loss in their Mexican overwintering grounds, but they're also threatened by not being able to find the milkweed plant, which is the only plant that their caterpillars can feed on. They look for that milkweed plant while they're breeding here in the U.S. And if they cannot find enough milkweed plant, there's simply no way for them to reproduce. They won't accept any other plant. Human activity has led to a decrease in the milkweed population, but human activity can also restore it. So, if monarch populations are threatened, are there other butterfly populations that are also threatened? There are several other butterflies that are actually listed on the endangered species list. There's um, around 20 or so that actually have received protection or are officially recognized as threatened. Many of these are kind of small butterflies that specialize in specific habitats. So you can really see in many of these cases that as their habitat gets threatened, the butterfly gets threatened too, because really you can't dissociate the two. All right, so can you tell me a little bit about what you do here at the Butterfly House, Chris? Sure. My role here at the Butterfly House is to look after our insect collection, which is more than just butterflies. As anyone who's been here knows, we have insects and spiders and millipedes and many other butterfly relatives that we like to promote to people and share with people and share our personal loves for too. We're also standing in the Butterfly House's native habitat garden. So a big part of our mission for people is to show how you can preserve and protect native, not only insects, but native plants and native wildlife of all kinds. So Chris, what does the Butterfly House do? How does your mission tie in with all of these threatened species? So the fundamental reason that the Butterfly House exists is to promote, promote an appreciation for insects of all kinds, so the monarch butterfly fits squarely into that. We teach people about the importance of planting milkweed and other native plants, and we encourage people not just to plant milkweed, but to also plant other flowering plants, to provide nectar for the monarch butterflies, to plant, to plant a diverse garden of different things. Our project pollinator program exists 
to do all of that and more. Project Pollinator does the education piece, teaching people about the importance of native pollinators and native plants. We do this through conversations with guests visiting the Butterfly House, also through outreaches to schools and libraries and other venues around the greater St. Louis area. We also do this by sponsoring a Project Pollinator plant sale each spring here at the Butterfly House, where people can acquire native plants to use in their garden. And we also have classes. So what would your advice be to anybody at home who wants to help the monarchs or any other endangered butterfly? If you want to help monarchs around your home, it's really a lot easier than you might think it is. They need plants. So if you just have a little bit of area to work with, plants and milk, it really does make a tremendous difference. Every little bit helps and is so important. If you have more space, plant plants that bloom in early spring, in midsummer and in late fall. If your garden blooms all throughout the year, then you're providing food for spring butterflies, summer butterflies, and fall butterflies. And what's more, plants never serve just one animal. Plants that serve the monarch, milkweed, and all the others will also be food for bees. They'll be food for flies, which are incredibly important pollinators. They'll be food for hummingbirds. So your garden, by existing at all, does a great job for the native pollinators. And it's very impactful. Thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to talk to us today. You're very welcome. Thank you for asking. As a botanical garden, we don't just try to save plants, we also try to save animals that are beneficial to those plants. So what are we doing to help the monarchs? We raise our own monarchs for educational purposes, we tag wild monarchs, and we work with several community science projects. We are raising our monarchs outside in natural conditions. This lets them adapt to the weather and keeps their migration cycle go on track. We have these great outdoor butterfly habitats to protect our caterpillars from birds and other predators. When the monarchs arrive, the caterpillars need to be removed from their shipping containers. Then they need fresh milkweed and a safe place to grow. To prevent diseases, we check their habitat daily for any damage and put sick caterpillars in quarantine. When the butterflies emerge from their chrysalids and their wings have finished drying, we tag them and test them for a parasite called OE before releasing them. We also tag and test wild monarchs for educational purposes and to help community science projects. So what can you do to help the monarchs? As Chris mentioned in his interview, you can plant milkweed and pollinator friendly plants for monarchs. Become a community scientist. They're not professionals, they're everyday people like you and me. Find a project and get involved today. See the links in the description below to find a local project. So, are you ready to be a community scientist? The mighty monarchs are counting on humans. We may be the problem, but we can also be the solution. We all have the power to help monarchs. For more educational dig-in videos like this one, check out the Missouri Botanical Gardens YouTube channel. Thanks for watching!